So we're looking at Algebra 2, Big Ideas, Section 3.5, which is solving nonlinear systems. If you recall, a system is two equations uh, or more that we want to solve and find the xy values that would make all of the equations, in this case it'll be two equations, true at the same time. And so we're looking, both graphically and algebraically, we should be able to do this. Uh, although graphically it is not generally the best method. We're going to look at this one graphically and then from here on out we'll use algebraic methods to solve non-linear systems. Here in this first example I've got two parabolas, y equals x squared plus 2x minus 6 and y equals negative 2 times quantity x plus 1 squared minus 4. The first equation is perhaps a little bit harder to get graphed because I don't know where the vertex of the first equation is. So I'm going to complete the square in order to find the vertex. And so in order to complete the square, which was section 3.3, if you need to watch that video, I'm going to take half of the middle coefficient, so that would be x plus 1. 1 is half of 2. And 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to stick a little plus 1, minus 1 action in there. And I can complete the square and get y equals uh, x plus 1, quantity squared, minus 7. So now in doing that, I can graph this because I know that the vertex, in vertex form, the vertex here would be negative 1, negative 7. And so I can go over to the graph, place the vertex. I know that the um, a value here is 1. And because the a value here is 1, I can uh, just move according to the vertex that I know that 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4, so I'll go over 2 and up 4 from the vertex. 3 squared is 9, so I can go over 3 and up 9 from the vertex. 4 squared is 16, which actually does fit on this graph. I'm not sure where the graphs are going to intersect, so I'm going to try to have a fairly decent graph throughout however big my graph space is. And so I can go ahead and graph this quadratic. Voila. Um, the second quadratic then, I'm going to graph on the same set of axes. So the second quadratic is already in vertex form. And I can see that the vertex here is going to be negative 1, negative 4. And I can place that vertex. And then in this quadratic, the a value is negative 2, which means instead of going over 1 and up 1, I'll go over 1 and down 2. Hey, look at that. I can see where some points are, are meeting already. Uh, and then 2 squared is 4, and I'll multiply that by negative 2. So I'll go over 2 units from the vertex and down 8, which would take me to a y-coordinate of negative 12. So I'm going to eye that in as best as possible since that's off my graph. So I can see that these two graphs are meeting uh, at two points. The two points where they would meet would be 0, negative 6 and negative 2, negative 6. And when I express the answers, I want to make sure that I'm expressing those answers as xy ordered pairs because I care about the x and the y, that those are the xy values that would be true in both of the equations. As you may imagine, there are many cases in which two parabolas do not meet at nice, neat grid marks. They might have irrational answers or fractional, rational answers. So graphing it doesn't work very well unless they meet at nice, neat grid marks. So we want to have an algebraic method or an algebraic way to do this as well. So we're going to look at the same problem, but algebraically. Because both equations have y isolated, if the x's and y's for the solution have to be the same, then I can say, well, this y must equal this y, which means that the right-hand sides of the equations must equal each other as well. So I can equate x squared plus 2x minus 6 with negative 2 times x plus 1 quantity squared minus 4. In order for me to solve this quadratic, I've got to get all the terms, uh, like terms combined and all the terms on one side so that I can try to use one of the strategies from earlier in the chapter to solve. 
which means I'm going to need to expand the right hand side. So negative 2 times x plus 1 times x plus 1 minus 4. My suggestion is that you would always write out the two factors of x plus 1 so that you don't mistakenly think that you can distribute a squared across a plus sign, which is illegal math. So if we have the two factors written out side by side, I can FOIL and I can see that that's going to be x squared plus 1x plus 1x makes plus 2x, and then 1 times 1 is 1. So I get negative 2 times quantity x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 4, and then I can distribute the negative 2. And then I can combine the like terms of the negative 2 and the negative 4. So I get negative 2x squared minus 4x minus 6. Um, that all equals this left-hand side that's just been hanging out over here waiting for us. And so now I have both sides in standard form. I can combine like terms. I'm going to move all of the terms to the left-hand side here so that I end up with a positive A value. So I'm going to add 2x squared to each side. I'm going to add 4x to each side. I'm going to add 6 to each side, which makes constant terms go away. Then I can use my knowledge of factoring to see that there's only two terms here, and they both have 3x in common. So I can solve this by factoring. I'll factor out a 3x, and I'd be left with x plus 2. So by the zero product property, one of those factors has to equal 0. If 3x equals 0, then x equals 0. And if x plus 2 equals 0, then x would equal negative 2. But finding the x values is not enough because I need to find the xy point that both of these equations would have in common. So then I take those x values and I would substitute them in so that I could find their corresponding y values. I need to have two sets of ordered pairs. You can substitute back into whichever equation you prefer, whichever equation is easiest. I'm going to choose the first equation here. If I put in 0 for x, I get 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 6, which is negative 6. And then if I put in negative 2, which we'll do in red here, that I would get y equals negative 2 squared plus 2 times negative 2 minus 6, which would be 4 minus 4 minus 6 which is negative 6 as well. The y values are not always going to be the same. This, that happens to be a coincidence that in this problem uh, we got both y values of negative 6. Both of these ordered pairs then uh, comprise the solution and that's the same solution that we got when we did the problem graphically. Let's look at another problem algebraically. In this problem I don't have two quadratics so the graph is not going to be two parabolas Instead, I have one linear equation and one quadratic equation. So if I wanted to graph this, I would have a straight line and a parabola. But I'm not going to graph. I'm going to go ahead and stick with my algebraic methods. I think that's the better way to go about it. And so I need to solve the top equation for y so that I can equate the right-hand sides. Alternatively, I could substitute here, what y equals, I could substitute that in for y in the first equation if I wanted. But I think that the easier way in this case would just simply be to solve for y. I'm going to add y to both sides, and I'm going to subtract 2 from each side, and I get y equals 3x minus 2. Then I can equate, and I can say 3x squared plus 24x plus 34 equals 3x minus 2. Now I need to get all the terms on one side so that I can have 0 on the other side and then I can try to solve the quadratic. Subtracting 3x from each side and then adding 2 to each side. I get 3x squared plus 21x plus 36 equals 0. And I may not be able to factor uh, that whole equation, I'm not sure, but I know I can at least factor a 3 out, so let's start with that and then see if I can continue from there. 
If I factor 3 out, I would have x squared plus 7x plus 12. That would have yet to equal 0. And luckily enough for us, uh, there are two numbers that multiply to 12 that add up to 7, and that would be 4 and 3. So I get 3 times x plus 4 times x plus 3 would equal 0. By the zero product property, 3 does not equal 0, so I'm not concerned with that. Uh, however, I can set the other two factors equal to 0. So if x plus 4 equals 0, then that means that x would equal negative 4. And if x plus 3 equals 0, then x would equal negative 3. Then I need to find the y values that correspond. So I know that my answer is going to be negative 4 or something and negative 3 something. Uh, you can substitute back into whichever equation is easier. I think we can all agree that the linear equation is the way to go for this one. So I'm going to choose the form that has y isolated. So y in the first case would equal 3 times negative 4 minus 2, which is negative 12 minus 2, which is negative 14. If I substitute in negative 3, then I get 3 times negative 3 minus 2, so negative 9 minus 2, which is negative 11. And the ordered pairs are the solutions. If you want to check your work just to be doubly sure that you did this correctly, you can then take that xy point, or both of them, that you found, and substitute those values into the other equation just to make sure that it's true. Of course, if you're confident in your work and you're pretty sure you did it correctly, you don't need to do that um, by default, only if you just want to make sure. So I could do that with one of the points to show you as an example. Uh, I could check and see negative 14, does that equal 3 times negative 4 squared plus 24 times negative 4 plus 34? And I put the question mark over the equal sign because I don't know if it equals it yet. That's why I'm checking it. So four, negative 4 squared would be 16, and 16 times 3 is 48. 24 times negative 4 would be negative 96. And then we'll do the addition and subtraction in order from left to right. So 48 minus 96 would be negative 48. And negative 48 plus 34 makes negative 14. So we weren't sure. We weren't sure. Yep, that one's true. Negative 14 equals negative 14. So that proves, or at least verifies, uh, that negative 4, negative 14 is a solution to that system. So how many solutions is it possible to get? In Algebra 1, when we studied linear systems, if we were looking at straight lines, then we could have one solution, which would be where the lines intersected, coordinates A, B, we could have no solutions if the two lines were parallel. There would be no solution. Or we could have infinite solutions if the two lines were actually the same line on top of each other. Uh, then this would be infinite solutions. But with parabolas and linear equations, or perhaps absolute value equations even, since we've studied the graphs of those, our answer choices um, get to be a little bit more varied, so we have a little bit more creativity in the shapes that can be made. So if I have two parabolas, certainly I can still get zero solutions if they happen to not meet at all. If the parabolas don't meet, either they open different directions and are shifted so that they never meet, or even if they open the same direction, if one parabola is uh, a couple units vertically shifted from the other parabola, then they'll never end up touching. We could also have a parabola and a straight line that end up never meeting, etc. So it's very easy that, yes, you can definitely still get no solution. We can also get one solution if the parabolas have different A values, but perhaps meet at the vertex, 
or it's possible that the parabolas are just tangents at a point. So they could just happen to intersect at one point. Same with a straight line. We could have a parabola and it just is intersecting the straight line at one point. We could have two solutions, which is what we've had in the examples that we've done. Whether or not both parabolas are facing the same direction, and we end up with two solutions. Or if the parabolas are facing opposite directions, we could end up with two solutions. We can end up with two solutions with a parabola and a straight line as well. So there's way more um, ways that these lines can intersect each other now that we're looking at parabolas and not simply linear functions. To get three solutions, we could take a parabola and an absolute value graph, perhaps, and notice that we would have three solutions there. In order to get four solutions, we could use a function parabola and a sideways parabola, a y-squared parabola, uh, if we were willing to do that and put it in conic form. We are not willing, however, to do that for this section. So yes, it is possible to get four solutions, but no, that's not something that you're going to have to do for this section. Um, and then you can, on your own if you'd like, see how you could go about trying to get more than four solutions, uh, depending on what the graphs look like. But hopefully this has given you a pretty nice start and you'll be able to solve some systems of nonlinear equations.